I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today, I want to talk about the power of saffron. We're all aware of saffron. It's expensive. It's expensive. It looks beautiful. It smells beautiful when you add it to your desserts, when you add it to your tea, when you add it to your coffee. It gives you this exquisite taste that all of us are used to, most of us. But what's interested me in saffron is the amount of medical and the amount of scientific studies that have been coming out one after another for the role that it plays today in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ADHD in a child, massively in cancer. Pharmaceutical companies are now studying extracts of saffron to help with every kind of cancer that exists out there. Why? Because it's one of the highest and the most potent antioxidants that you can ever find. Yes, again, the beauty of nature. Antioxidants are required. Anti-inflammatories are required at a natural level when we are trying to fight lifestyle diseases or severe end of life diseases. When you can find a way to reduce and keep inflammation low in the human body and keep the immune system smart and well-trained, that's how you enable the intelligence of the human body to fight disease as well as prevent the onset of diseases. Today we're healthy, tomorrow we may get sick. It doesn't mean healthy people don't fall sick. But when the immune system kicks in and when the body has that intelligence, which is well trained to bring down inflammation, we can recover from sicknesses way, way easier than someone who hasn't trained the immune system and has issues with inflammation and chronic inflammation in the human body. So we've written a whole document that we spent time taking out from medical journals and scientific journals. It's soon going to be available on our website because I want you to read it. There's too much to talk about on today's call, but we're going to talk about it because a lot of us keep saffron at home. And some of us, we don't keep it at home because we think it's expensive. But the beauty of saffron is even a small little box of it can last you for a long time because you can't overdo it with saffron. If you don't overdo it with saffron, it can even be fatal. So the whole point is you can go with 0.5 grams to maybe a gram a day. Add a little bit to your tea as you're brewing it. Add a little bit to your salads. Add a little bit to your herbal concoction. Some people sprinkle saffron on their desserts. Some of them add it with their nut mixes. That's up to you. We we'll give you ways of how to use it. But... Adding a little bit with a focus on prevention or if we have a condition can only be therapeutic. I must warn you though that if you're in the middle of a pregnancy, you want to stay away from saffron unless your doctor advises you that you can have it in small uh, amounts because in the olden days, saffron was actually used to induce labor or when there was a miscarriage to allow the fetus to come out. So a lot of saffron was boiled in water and given to wives to have an early abortion or to actually move the baby out of their system if there was a miscarriage. So you want to be really careful if you're pregnant. Adding a dash of it is not going to cause anyone harm, of course, unless you are allergic to it. So what brings magic in saffron? Okay, the magic in saffron is found in many bioactives, flavonoids, carotenoids that are available in saffron. One of them is called crocin. Yes, exactly like the tablet crocin, but with all the good sides of it, without any side effects. Basically, crocin is a carotenoid which has an immense antioxidant and anti-inflammatory impact on the human body. So today we're looking at Alzheimer's, we're looking at cancer in a huge way because it's now being documented that uh, saffron and the, and the flavanols in saffron can actually be highly anti-proliferative, which means the immune system in any cancer has failed. The job of the immune system is to recognize proliferation of cells or the DNA is corrupt. So a cell, when it gets cancerous, has a self-destructive ability called cell apoptosis to kill itself. But when the DNA or the computer program is changed, it's like a virus hijacking your DNA computer. The cell doesn't know how to self-destruct, allowing it to grow. And then it's a chain reaction, the second cell and the third cell. And then the collection of the growth of abnormal cells can become a tumor, cancerous, and that's what happens. So the immune system has failed which is why every, every recovery protocol of a cancer program has to focus on training an immune system that failed. You can have the best chemotherapy, the best radiation, surgery, do it all. But if you're not training the immune system, your cancer will come back again. So moving back into it, it's a, it's, a saffron is great for the liver. It's being used to protect people when they have liver cirrhosis, grade one fatty liver, grade two fatty liver. When their enzymes are all over the place, you recover from malaria, jaundice, uh, dengue, and the, your liver enzymes, there's inflammation in your liver. Adding a little bit of saffron to your milk. If you're vegan, you can add it to your almond milk, you can add it to your black tea, or you can just make an herbal concoction with green tea leaves and maybe a pinch or a dash of saffron. It is great when it comes to depression. In fact, psychiatric report shows us that a case study done where uh, 
where uh, participants were given 30 mg, not grams, 30 mg is much lesser than a gram, a day reduced people's depression by almost 70 to 80 percent. Of course, the study still has a lot more to be completed on. But what stops us if we're going through depression, if we're going through epilepsy, because it's a super, super anti-convulsant as well. So we can add a little bit to our salads, a little bit to our drinks and start the process. I'm not saying if you add saffron, your diseases are going to disappear. Remember, it's called food synergy. Various foods mix. Okay, they combine in the human body, they get assimilated, they get absorbed in a way to support trillions of cells in the human body. For young children with ADHD, it is also being experimented where a little bit of saffron is put in children's milk or in their salads, and that can help to reduce hyperactive patterns or hyperactive symptoms in a child along, of course, with their medication and lifestyle changes if they are on medication. So coming back to cognitive health, it's being used in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's today, memory loss, dementia. So it's so important for us to understand that when we or our loved ones suffer from these conditions, we must look at what we feed patients. I'm not here to stop you from the medication that you are on, but I'm here to warn you that if you're only taking the medication and thinking it's gonna solve your problem, it's never gonna solve your problem alone. Allopathic medication will only suppress the symptoms, which is needed. But if you want to bring about recovery, if you want to slow down the progression of an Alzheimer's, slow down the progression of a dementia or a Parkinson's, yes, you can do it by feeding the body what it needs. And saffron is one of them. So when we come down, tumors, it's playing a huge role, huge role in tumors today. Macular degeneration, a lot of people have eye problems, macular degeneration, saffron is now added and it's actually found in a lot of nutraceuticals which are for eye health as well. Multiple sclerosis plays a huge role in autoimmune conditions. So adding a little bit of uh, saffron, if you are not allergic to it and it suits you, can play a huge role. Nerve damage, a lot of diabetics suffer from chemical uh, neuropathy. Cancer patients suffer from neuropathy because of the chemotherapy, which means they have a tingling sensation in their fingers, they have joint pain at the nerve endings, they have it in their feet, and that neuropathy can cause a dull kind of ache throughout the day. Saffron along with other anti-inflammatories can also help with that. So there is so much finally coming down to reproductive health. For the longest time, civilizations have used uh, saffron for people who are infer infertile, for reproductive issues, for people who have infertility problems, for men who have erectile dysfunction problems. It's, used, it's been used with other combinations like raw honey for reproductive health. So it's also termed as an aphrodisiac today. Again, it's everything to do with lifestyle. You can't be stressed out and say that, hey, you know, I have low libido and let me just have saffron and I'm gonna get better. No, we need to understand we gotta work on nutrition, exercise, sleep, emotional wellness. And when you put all of these things together, these little gifts from nature actually work better. That's why they're called bioactives. For a bioactive to work in the body, it needs the right environment. I'll give you the simple example again. You can be the best baker in the world. You can make that perfect dough for your bread. It could be perfect and you put it in an oven, but the temperature of the oven is even off by quarter of a degree and your bread will not rise. What does that show you? You need the right environment for things to work. So you can have the best food. It won't work if the environment within you is not conducive. So we always look at health in a holistic way. Saffron sounds great on paper. It's exciting. It makes you want to go and buy saffron right now. But again, it's not going to be the magic, magic plant or the herb or the spice that works for you. Everything has to work together. So remember, if you're pregnant, you want to take permission from your doctor. Number two, don't overdo it. Because yes, the last point I want to discuss is how saffron is now being studied for obesity and for fat loss because it has a property, it has a property of blocking fat absorption into the human body. By urine this, you shouldn't go crazy and start taking teaspoons and teaspoons and boiling it in water because it can be fatal if you take too much of it. It can cause gastro bleeding if you take too much of it. So more of something doesn't mean more results. Sometimes less is more. So you may want to experiment with uh, saffron. It's been handed over to us from generations. It was used in sweets and in cooking and in biryanis and in food and whatever. The way I like to have it is a nice cup of Earl Grey tea with a little bit of saffron or any black tea for that way, boil it, add a little bit of saffron towards the end, it gives you a beautiful calming taste. And the last point is, it is completely calming for the mind. Saffron has a very positive effect on the central nervous system, which is why it is therapeutic for people who are going through depression. 
For people who have an imbalance in their dopamine and their serotonin, saffron plays a huge, huge role. So again, it can help us to calm down at night if we've had a rough day. It can help us to prepare for sleep better because the mind is calm. So you can actually use saffron to calm yourself down. So if you don't want to do a tea at night because it con contains caffeine, maybe you can do a little bit of chamomile tea and brew it with a little bit of saffron. And that can be extremely calming for you just before bedtime. Have a great day, everyone. Do everything safely always. It doesn't have to suit everyone. If it suits you, great. Do it. Don't overdo it. If it doesn't suit you, don't do it. You'll find another gift from nature that gives you similar properties, if not more or less. Have a great day. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.